This is Twit. If you've got your chipstick handy, Bob, you you might want to hang on to it there because we might need it in just a minute here. Um, yeah, yesterday, uh, well, I had to meet a tower crew out at a uh, at a site to do some work. The uh, the Heliax that came down, and we're going to have a picture of uh, Heliax and real hard line here in the future. I didn't bring it along tonight, but we're, we're going to look at that. Anyway, the connector was bad, and it, it was at the bottom of the tower there, so they didn't have to climb it, but uh, this crew came from Arkansas, and they didn't you know, get in town until like oh, 4.30 yesterday afternoon. They were going to change that connector to me or for me, and that meant that uh, that site had to go off the air. Now, there's oh, close to 25 kilowatts that goes through that connector, so, uh, you know, we, we want it to be okay. I switched over to an auxiliary site and ran a much lower power while they took this connector off and took it apart and to go in and replace the, the seals and gaskets in it. Because it's about $800 connector. It's not real cheap. But, uh, you know, if you're going to run 25 uh, kW, you're not going to do that with a PL259. Anyway, they had a lot of trouble taking it apart, getting it off the transmission line. And when they did, they couldn't really get the connector apart and then had trouble putting it back on. It ended up, uh, we were out there to mm, close to 9.30 last night wrestling with that connector. The problem was we only had that one connector and, uh, you know, the, the new rubber seals and all to go inside of it. So if they messed that one up, you know, we were in big trouble. So that was kind of spooky to have that happening on a Halloween. I planned to be here at the house, uh, you know, helping to eat that bag of candy, but uh, it just didn't work out for me this year. Well, I got a few pictures out from the transmitter site, and we're going to look at just a few of them tonight, and we'll have uh, a few more of them here in the future. The first one we've got here is a picture of Bob's chip stick. Now, uh, this is one that our friend... Uh, uh, Chip uh, told Bob, hey, you ought to, ought to talk about this. And that's uh, that's version 2.0 there, isn't it, Bob? Because yes. I, th I think the first version did not have that resistor in it. It was just, uh, right. you know, just went uh, straight to ground. And uh, that would work. Uh, certainly, it would work good, and I, I assume that resistor is there just so you don't grow, draw quite as big a spark when you initially touch it on there. Well, in um, uh, a broadcast transmitter, they ha they have a stick, too. They don't call it a chip stick. Let's look at this next photo here. Uh, this is often referred to as a Jesus stick or a, a lot of other names. That's... Uh, the photo's really a little out of scale because of the angle I shot it. But uh, that's the whole rig there. It's probably, um, oh, just under two feet long. And you can see there's that coily coil coming out the bottom. No, that's not a microphone cable. That's a heavy gauge um, uh, stranded conductor inside of there that ties to ground. It doesn't go through a resistor. It goes straight to ground because it's touching on the side of a 4CX15000A tube. Uh, that that tube is, um, well, in this case, it's putting out around 25 kilowatts. The vo plate voltage on it runs between 8 and uh, 9 kilovolts. So that's, that's quite a bit of energy. And uh, it runs, you know, just under 4 amps too. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot of power going there. When you shut that transmitter down, you want to make absolutely certain that there's no voltage remaining or, uh, or boy, you know, you're going to really hurt somebody better if you don't kill them. So that's why most all of these big broadcast transmitters that were tube type came with one of these uh, shorting sticks with it. This one's attached right on the front of the transmitter. And uh, no resistance. It's just, you know, straight to ground. Now, there are interlocks in the transmitter, and we'll look at them in just a second here, that are supposed to help uh, bleed off this voltage and, and keep it from ever being there in the first place. But this is a, a safety precaution here because those 
will stick sometime and don't work just right. And, uh, you know, you, you can't afford to, to make a mistake there. So what you see in there uh, that the stick is touching, that's the plate of a 4CX15000. Right above it, that uh, kind of maroon color uh, is an insulator. And above that, that's a uh, gold anodized aluminum. That's the plate blocking capacitor. Uh, so that's how it gets the RF off of the tube on up to the transmission line to, to go out. Uh, let's flip over to the next photo here and look at a high voltage power supply. Uh, this this is scaled down. I cut some of the um, extra stuff out just so it wouldn't be uh, quite too much to look at and talk about. If we look over on the left, though, uh, you see that blue square there? That's around uh, T1. That is a three-phase high-voltage transformer. It takes in three-phase 208 and outputs, you know, between eight and 9,000 volts. Then there's three separate rectifiers you can see drawn on the photo there. Well, in reality, um, there's a lot of diodes in those rectifier stacks. Yeah, thanks for that, Victor. That makes it a little easier to see. Uh, each one of those blocks, though, is a, is a rectifier stack. I don't remember the exact number of diodes on there, but quite a few because, you know, you got almost 10,000 volts that's got to go through them. Okay, you see the fat black wire uh, leaves out of there. That's going to be the negative. Uh, the red wire is the positive. If we follow that red wire on to the right, uh, the other right, yeah, uh, you see it's it's going through a couple of 100K ohm resistors there in series, and then that goes on down to uh, the, the negative terminal. So what we're doing there is we've got 200 K ohms across that power supply all the time. Uh, right to the left of them, you can see capacitor C1 there. That's a, a 22 microfarad capacitor. And I'd say 22 microfarad, that's, that's not very big. Well, actually, this capacitor is, um, you know, about 18 inches tall and about that deep and about four inches wide. When you're putting 10,000 volts on it, a 22 microfarad capacitor can get pretty large. That's the filtering on that power supply. To take the ripple off, that thing will hold uh, quite a punch. So those two 100K ohms in series there, what that does is it's always putting some load across that capacitor. So when you turn off the high voltage, that capacitor still got a heck of a charge on it. Those are responsible for bleeding it on down and, uh, and you know, preventing you from, from getting a nasty shock. But those things will open up, and you won't have anything across that. Also, it's not instantaneous. The moment that you turn off that power supply, those two don't drain it down. It takes a few seconds. So if you've got a plate voltage meter on your transmitter and you watch it, you'll see it takes a few seconds for it to drop all the way on down to zero. Now, in the next photo, uh, if you'll remember, I mentioned a minute ago about the interlocks. Well, inside that green rectangle there, there's a lot of switches that are tied to ground. Uh, some of them are tied directly to ground. Some of them are drawn similar to a push button. If we could zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And they're also tying the screen supply to ground. What those are is every door on that transmitter has one of these interlock switches. When you take that door off or open it, that switch is supposed to immediately short out that high voltage to ground to prevent you from accidentally getting across it. And that's... Uh, that's not a very um, pleasant thing to see if the transmitter's up and running and you yank a door open. That's going to make a heck of a flash. <laughs> uh, but they're there to, you know, to, to protect you. Um, those things can get sticky, and sometimes they don't work. They, you know, they just don't close. They, they stay open. That's when that uh, stick there comes in handy to short it out. 
if we look below uh, or in the next photo there, uh, I've got another circle. Uh, this one is purple. And right there is a high voltage uh, meter multiplier. That's a lot of high value resistors in series. And those drop that voltage down before it goes to the plate voltage meter. Because, you know, a meter may say it's got 10 kilovolts on the scale, but no, you know, it's, it's not. Um, so we've got to have some way of dropping that voltage down to a reasonable level before we send it to that tiny little meter movement. And that's what that circuit right there is about. Well, that's all I've got for um, uh, transmitters tonight. I just wanted to talk about a few things there. And while we had the chip stick in mind, I thought I'd talk about the Jesus stick and a little bit about um, some of the finer points of a high voltage power supply. If you saw, very simple, not much to it, but uh, really dangerous. Uh, especially when you get up into the higher voltages. So uh, that's some of the safety features that are built in to, uh, to broadcast transmitters to, to protect the uh, engineer or the operator, whoever's going to be monkeying around with it. <laughs> 